All right, let's see. We are now live. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're very happy to have you join us this evening for our incoming kindergarten parent orientation. <clears throat> My name is Aidan McCann. I'm the principal here at Brown Elementary. I am joined by our assistant principal and EL director, Christy Arnold, as well as our nurse, Maria Chopur. Two of our kindergarten teachers, Leslie Barnes and Jen Risi. We also have our PTO president, Chris Therian, with us the, this evening. You should be able to see the six of us on the screen. I'm going to share my screen as well as a presentation that we have prepared for you. And we will be happy to answer questions that you have at the end. Uh, if you could hold your questions until that time, I think that would be great because I believe that a lot of the presentation will answer many of the questions that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and share that presentation. And Christy Arnold, if you could just let me know if you see that and if that is working. So just take me a second. Just got to hit my share button. Okay, pick the right one. All right, Christy, can you see that? Yes, I can see it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, before we begin, I want to let you know uh, that we're going to share quite a bit of information this evening. As we share this information, I am sure that families have questions about what the fall is potentially going to look like. This presentation this evening is going to describe what school typically looks like when we are full live. Uh, we're not going to be getting into a lot of the protocols that we currently have in place, uh, and I'm also not going to get into um, a lot of the what it might look like. We're going to go with uh, the understanding that we are planning for a full return to live instruction. That doesn't mean that that is exactly what is going to happen. Of course, we're going to get more information from Dr. Nolan and the Board of Health, uh, but our presentation this evening will describe what school typically looks like. You'll get more information as time goes by prior to the start of school to let you know if there are any particular changes. All right, so our agenda this evening. Uh, you're going to have an opportunity to meet our staff. Uh, you will hear about a day in the life of a kindergarten student, learn a little bit about the curriculum and our support services for students, hear important logistical information, and we'll be sure to answer any questions that you have at the end. I want to start off by having you meet our team. We have five amazing, talented kindergarten teachers at Brown Elementary. They are Jen Reese, Leslie Barnes, Danielle Miller, Kim Krug, and Kathy Hurley. And I am going to turn it over to Miss Reese, and she's going to tell you a little bit about a day in the life of a brown bear. I think Miss Reese is muted because I don't hear her. I should know that by now. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Let me start that again. Um, my name is Jen Reese, and I'm one of the kindergarten teachers here. And tonight I'm going to be able to introduce you to the morning routine and an arrival. Um, I know as I'm speaking for all the kindergarten team, we're super excited about meeting your children next year. Um, and a day in the kindergarten is very full with many, many fun things. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of just the morning. My hope is that you can take away how great we want your children to fall in love with school, um, building friendships, um, inquiring life skills, and of course, just having fun. Um, the moment that children arrive in the morning, they will be sitting outside our classrooms and they will get a time to socialize and talk to each other. We will then greet your child at the door and start our morning routine. They will unpack their backpack, get out their lunchbox. We have special red folders that they bring in and they will put their coats away and they will head into the classroom. Um, part of this is very important for us because it not only teaches them independence, but it also, um, they get to start their executive functioning skills right off in the morning. 
Another part of our morning routine is called a morning meeting. This is set up for the rest of the day. Um, it's basically how we introduce ourselves um, and it is part of our responsive classroom curriculum. It helps build social skills. And of course, it also helps with classroom community. We have a greet, a share time. Um, we also have a fun activity that we usually share. And these are often tied in with part of our curriculum. We also include a, mo a movement break um, to get some of their wiggles out and then we can start our morning learning. We also integrate um, calendar time at this time. Um, and this incorporates a lot of, of our math and science skills. Some pieces we'll touch on is counting skills, graphing, weather, seasonal change, and of course, temperature. Um, classroom teachers uh, fine tune their individual schedules. But as you can see, we have a lot of learning already right starting in the morning, um, which also includes literacy. And part of that is our science and social curriculum which also is taught through our literacy block. Um, we also have something called reading and writing workshop. It looks like uh, this, we have a mini lesson first, and then it's followed by practical practice of skills. We may also do independent work, partner work, small group work. We also have fun game centers and stations. And at our Hopin House in the fall, you'll probably learn a little bit more on how the individual teacher does the curriculum and get more details on how we deliver the instruction at that time. Um, we have snack about halfway through our morning. And during the snack, the children have the opportunity again to socialize with their classmates, build self-help skills such as opening snack containers and cleaning up after them themselves. We also sometimes um, during the morning also have about a 15 minute break to go outside and play. Another chance to get our wiggles out so we can come back and continue our learning. Um, one of the most important part of our days is also found in our morning, which is our choice time. This is one of the students most favorite time of the day. The children are able to sign up for different play stations. For example, they might go to the dollhouse or the blocks, Legos, puppets, reading corner and art. And I have so many other ones that I can't even mention all of them. We may change these stations throughout the year, such as our housekeeping station might start in the beginning of the year and later in the year it might um, actually open up to a veterinarian's office. Our writing center often starts with us just drawing pictures, it changes sometimes to a post office. And then at the end of the year, we even get to have them make build books in that station. Um, the children help build and add to the materials of these stations. We work hard to make sure that the children play in different stations with a variety of their peers. Um, and it's a critical time of the day to work on sharing, um, taking turns and self-regulation. Um, it is quite a busy morning, full of many different opportunities for learning. Um, and now I'm going to have Mrs. Barnes share what we do in the afternoon. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mrs. Barnes, and I'm so excited to meet our next group of kindergartners. After a rigorous morning of learning and play experiences, the students will wash their hands and line up to go eat lunch in our cafeteria. Lunch is also a social experience that can be a little overwhelming at first. All five kindergarten classes will eat together while sitting at tables with their own classmates. Much like snack time in the classroom, this is a time to practice independence of self-help skills, such as opening containers and packages. Students are expected to remain seated while eating, and they're able to raise a hand for some help from a lunch monitor. After lunch, all the kindergarten students will engage in similar activities, but on different schedules. We attempt to incorporate a brief 10 to 15 minute quiet thinking time into the day to give the students an opportunity to rest their brain. Quiet music may play in the classroom while students think, read, draw, color, or use Play-Doh. It is also an opportunity to use the bathroom which is located in or next to each of our kindergarten classrooms, so they don't have far to go. 
The students will also have a 30 minute outdoor afternoon recess daily, unless it is rainy or below 20 degrees in the winter time. Two to three kindergarten classes typically share this recess time, so it is an opportunity to make or see friends from other classrooms. The students will also participate in a 40 minute specialist class. That would be art, music, library, or PE, gym each day. Our afternoon academic block may be used for science and social studies work or to enhance our math learning that begins at our morning calendar time. Typically, many lessons teach direct concepts and they're um, usually taught on a big rug within a circle before the students are sent off to explore or apply their understanding, typically using hands-on materials such as unifix blocks, color tiles, counting bears, or pattern blocks. So there's a lot of play built into all of our learning. Much of this learning takes place through games as well. We play with partners or in small groups, and as the students are doing this, they are learning to take turns, share their thinking, listen to others, and apply concepts that are taught in fun ways. Our afternoons are also a wonderful time for read aloud or shared reading stories. To further support our social emotional learning, we also use curriculum from Open Circle to provide weekly opportunities to learn about our feelings and discuss issues as they may arise within the classroom. We also use responsive classroom techniques to build a respectful classroom community and to practice our communication skills. Our day ends with a closing circle activity similar to the way it begins in the morning and we personally say goodbye to each other and do another sort of movement or fun activity before we pack up and complete classroom jobs as we have built a strong community. The kindergarten students will then gather by dismissal types in the hallway before a kindergarten teacher escorts each group to their specific dismissal location. And that happens five minutes before the first through fourth graders exit. So all of the kindergartners are well accounted for, although they're usually pretty tired by the end of the day. But it is a lot of fun and it's a lot of great learning. Thank you, Mrs. Barnes. I want to share a little bit more um, about our curriculum and some specifics around our curriculum. Our curriculum includes a balance of social, emotional, and academic instruction, as uh, Ms. Barnes and Ms. Reese shared. We do use the Common Core State Standards to implement a balanced literacy program that does include phonemic awareness and phonics instruction uh, using a program called Foundations. We also teach math through the Investigations program. Uh, science and social studies are also a key component of our instruction. Open Circle, as Ms. Barnes was talking about, is a social emotional curriculum that is used across all of our classrooms. Uh, and finally, it should be noted that students are given opportunities for plenty of structured playtime. For some reason, it's taking me a minute to advance each of the slides, but they're going. Uh, with literacy being one of the most important subjects that we teach, our kindergarten team works closely with Susan Kennedy, who is our literacy specialist, to provide all students with what they need. Those students who need extra support in the area of literacy or math, uh, they will receive targeted support through our early intervention program, which provides small group instruction uh, beyond our core curriculum. We have five KEEPS. Uh, as we call them, or kindergarten early intervention program teachers, one in each classroom who provide that small group instruction to those students who need it. Uh, and I want to share a little bit about our specials and our specialists. Wellness, literacy, and arts are critical to developing a whole child. We believe that from K to four. Specials, which include art, library, music, and physical education, are an integral part of the student's day, and they attend them on a rotational basis every week. In art, kindergarten students are presented uh, with their first introduction to the visual arts as they enter the native public schools. We focus on the exploration of art materials, development of fine motor skills, and setting expectations for respectful personal and social behavior. Uh, in music, students at Brown receive a 40-minute general music class once a week, 
third and fourth grade students at Brown also have a 40 minute chorus rehearsal once a week as well. The main goal is to create a classroom environment where all students feel comfortable exploring and creating music. In PE, all students at Brown go to physical education twice a week where they're engaged in fine motor and gross motor skills uh, and tasks to learn and engage with other students in partners and in teams. And finally, in our library, which we call our learning commons, our kindergarten students come to that learning commons once a week. They hear a variety of types of literature. Those are read aloud and they learn how to use the library and check out books and do other related activities. And I'm going to share with you who our specialists are. Our art teacher is Michelle Parvin. Our music teacher is Mark Jodis. Our phys ed teacher is Rob Dombrowskis. And our library teacher or learning commons uh, staff member is Barbara McCransky. I'm gonna turn it over to our assistant principal and EL director, Christy Arnold for our next slide. Good evening, everyone. I'm Christy Arnold, I'm the assistant principal at Brown, as well as the English language education director. Um, so I'm going to talk about the English language education program first. Um, our program, the ELE program, as we call it, provides direct instruction um, in English for students who are learning English as their second or possibly third language. Um, this, in the kindergarten level, this instruction happens in the classroom and also in small groups outside of the classroom. Um, children who have another language spoken at home in addition to English, um, or rather than English, will be assessed for their English profici proficiency. These screenings will happen in during the school day in the fall and you will receive information from me at that time. If you have any questions about the screening, um, you can reach out to me either before in the fall or when you receive notification. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, next, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about special education. The Brown Elementary School provides a continuum of services to support the learner, learning of all students identified as requiring specialized instruction. Our special education team works to ensure that all students receive an appropriate education. And more information is there. All right, now some logistics. And as Mr. McCann um, mentioned earlier, this is what we do in a typical year. So that's the information we will share this evening. Um, of course, as the year gets underway, you will receive more specific details as um, we finalize those. Um, but on the Natick Public School website, you will find information about signing up for the bus. And if you have a smartphone, that QR code that is on the screen, I think it's still there. Um, if you put your phone on that, that brings you right to the Natick Public Schools website um, and you can sign up for the bus and information about current fees is there, as well as if you need financial assistance for the bus, the information is also on the website. Um, specifically, our drop-off begins at 8.15 and pick up for kindergarten is 251. Um, like one of our K teachers mentioned earlier, it's a five minutes earlier so that our littlest learners can get out safely before the big kids um, find their way to all the different places. Again, you'll receive detailed directions for pickup um, and dismissal this summer. You will also receive, and this one is very important, um, uh, email about pickup patrol. The image of pickup patrol is on the bottom of the screen right now. This will, um, you'll get an email to sign up and you will tell us how your child will be dismissed, um, their default plan, a, or if they'll be absent or if they're going to be late. If you have a change to dismissal, it's very important that you sign up for pickup patrol as that is the system that we use for all dismissals and absent absence and tardies. Next one, thank you. Um, food services. So we have a great breakfast and lunch program at Brown School and luckily next year, those will be free for all students. So any student for the next school year is able to get breakfast or lunch at school at no cost. In a typical year, 
you would need to pay for lunch um, or um, if you had free or reduced lunch, you could get it that way. And we have a system called My School Bucks. But again, you'll receive your student ID number on the first day of school to set this up. Um, you can also send in lunches as well. And in addition to lunch, um, we do ask that you send a snack for your child every day. Um, oh, wait, no, go back. Communications is also on this page. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you'll receive communications from the classroom teacher as well as the district to the email that you used when you registered. Um, so if you use one or two, those are where you'll get information. In addition, you can find the latest Brown School newsletters on our website. Every Friday, you'll receive an email called the MPS Engage. This will contain important district information as well as a link to the Brown School weekly newsletter. If you haven't already signed up for this email, please do so as soon as possible. You can find the link to sign up on the bottom of the nativeps.org um, website or in this presentation, which will be sent to you after this. And you can also go directly to the Brown School website. We have a host of information there for you. Next. Thank you. All right, so this one I talk about placement. So we take careful consideration when building our kindergarten classrooms. Kindergarten teachers will use the information that you provided on your registration and or any other relevant information that we have gathered from registration, um, screenings, conversations, any of that to make careful um, and intentional classrooms that are well balanced in terms of academic and social needs. You will receive the information about who your child's homeroom teacher is going to be this summer. A week after that notification, you will receive a welcome letter from your child's teacher as well. Um, kindergarten screening. So many of you did these screenings uh, last week. And what was that the week before? Um, maybe the week before. Um, so typically we do those screenings in person, but this year we did them um, completely virtually. Um, these screenings help us to determine where students are developmentally and also to ensure that we fulfill our child find obligation, which identifies those students who may need additional um, services. Um, some students will be screened in the fall if they weren't screened or if they were just a little bit shy and didn't want to speak on the, the camera because that happened. So those will be done again if necessary. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to our teachers, Jen Reese and Leslie Barnes, to talk about the first few days of school. So in an attempt to provide a smooth transition for our newest little learners, we split each class into two groups, A and B. On the very first day of school, group A will arrive a half hour after school begins for the older students, while group B remains at home. This allows for a smaller group to acclimate to the classroom and learn some basic routines and not be overwhelmed by too many students. That morning, we will meet on the playground and line up by classroom to enter the building. This is when the parents will wave goodbye and meet with our principal and PTO briefly. Parents will then return to school at 1 p.m., a little earlier than we normally would dismiss, so that they can visit the classroom. The new kindergarten students will then show you what they learned as you participate in a scavenger hunt together, and you'll explore our new learning environments. The group B will then come the following day while group A remains at home, and then all the kindergarten students will attend together on the third day of school. So the third day is on Wednesday, September um, 8th, and this is a, their first full day of kindergarten. On this day, all of the students will attend. Your child will meet all their classmates. They can bring a special teddy bear or stuffed animal with them to ease the transition. We often take a tour of the school on that day and help the children feel more comfortable 
being here at Brown. This is also the first day that your child will be able to take the bus if they're having a, and have their transportation plan fulfilled. It is a very busy day and you can expect that your child will be coming home very, very tired during the first few weeks of school. However, you will be absolutely amazed on how they grow and learn throughout their kindergarten year. Thank you. Okay, so next I will introduce their not, well, one of them's not here today, but Shamini Adams is our school counselor um, and she supports the social and emotional development of all students at Brown. Um, Brown School, uh, uh, Brown, school's counseling program includes class lessons, targeted small groups, and indi individual supports as needed. Shamini is available to all of you to discuss any questions or thoughts you may have about your child's transition to kindergarten. Please email her if you would like to set up a time to talk. Also, she has a wonderful website that has so many resources on it. If you go to the Brown School website and go to Meet Our Teams and scroll down to School Counselor, it will bring you straight to her site with so many resources on there. Um, next is Maria Chopur, who is here this evening. Yeah, hi. Maria Chopur is our school nurse, um, and she supports the health and wellness of all of our students. In addition to providing direct care for students throughout the day, she's also responsible for maintaining student health records and communicating necessary health information to faculty and staff so that they are better prepared to assist students. She is also on our website under health office. And I'm going to turn it over. Thank you, Christy. Um, I just had a few things on this slide that I wanted to go over. Prior to the start of your kindergartner, um, at the beginning of the school year, I need to have a, a, their most recent physical. It would be their annual five-year physical exam. And it should be dated after September 1st, 2020. And the things that we look for on it are the hearing screening, the vision screening, their immunizations must be up to date and a lead test. So um, that could be emailed to me and my contact information is in this presentation or you can also call the school. Um, it can also be faxed directly from the doctor and I'm happy to provide that fax number. Um, in regards to getting your, your kindergartner ready for school, a few things we ask you to work on over the summer, um, one of them being self-help skills. Uh, your child should be independent in going to the bathroom themselves and be able to dress themselves and manipulate their clothing, pull up their pants, pull down their pants, that kind of thing to use the toilet um, and able to wash their hands independently. Um, there's a few things that I would like to know about your child. It will help me help your child if they come into my office. Um, does your child have allergies? Do they have food allergies? Do, if they require medications to be given in school, um, if they have an injury at home that we don't know about because it happened on the weekend, it's a good thing to let me know so I can prepare the teacher to help them. Um, if they have any major medical conditions, asthma, for example. Um, and if your child needs medication, excuse me, medications in school, um, the forms can be found on the Natick Public Schools website, which is listed there. Um, but you can contact me for some more information and I'm happy to guide you through that. Um, but there's a few forms that need to be filled out and the medication would have to be dropped off by the parent. No students are allowed to carry medications. Um, in regards to reporting absences, tardies, late arrivals, we do, as it was mentioned earlier, use pickup patrol for that. Everything health related um, absences go through pickup patrol as well and I check it daily. So um, if you have any questions, please comment at the end and I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. I have two other folks um, who I want to introduce to you. Uh, Susan Kennedy, she's not here with us this evening. Uh, Chris Darian is, she's gonna have a chance to speak with you in just a second. As the literacy specialist, Susan Kennedy coordinates our intervention programs to our keep FEEP and Title I programs, as well as our literacy and math benchmark assessments. So she's the keeper of a lot of our data. 
along with me. She also provides instructional coaching to our teachers and works directly with students in daily literacy. As I said a second ago, our PTO president is Chris Therian, and I'm going to turn it over to her so she can talk to you a little bit about the PTO. Hi there, my name is Chris Therian. I am a parent of a second grader and a sixth grader. So I've been at Brown School for a number of years. This year I was the PTO president and it's a two year role. I will also be PTO president next year with a new incoming co-president. So the PTO, if you're not familiar with what a PTO actually does, at Brown School it might be slightly different. Um, we are fortunate enough to have a lot of parent involvement. And when I say involvement, most of that happens to be money, but uh, I'll get to that in a moment. What our PTO is able to provide are enrichment experiences. Primarily, this is through our cultural arts program. Uh, in the past, we've had uh, programs from the Discovery Museum, dance and music performances, uh, author visits. So it's something a little extra that the kids get during their school day. Uh, one of the other things that we as a PTO like to do, we try to do our fundraising as a community building. So we're not going to ask you to go out and sell candles or candy bars or wrapping paper. We don't do any of those type of fundraisers. This year, primarily, the only fundraisers we're able to do are uh, some restaurant nights, which are really great. We have partner with a bunch of local restaurants. We have about one a month. You can, everyone has to eat dinner. So the restaurants give us a portion of whatever um, was made that evening um, from all of our families that, that stop in and pick up dinner. Some of the other activities that we've had in the past, and we plan to continue once we're able to, uh, our family dance party. Kids love getting together with the great DJ, has them doing all kinds of great games and dancing. Um, kids at this age aren't cognizant of other people making fun of dancing. They all just want to get out there and get all of their wiggles out and have a lot of fun. One of the favorite activities that we have, which is really a great fundraiser, are the pancake breakfast. Lots of families get involved at in helping cook the pancakes and all the kids show up and eat breakfast together in the cafeteria. And that happens at the end of our fall book fair. So that everybody gets a chance to bring their parents to the book fair and show them what books they weren't able to pick out during the week. And they do get an opportunity during the week to stop in at book fair. Most of our fundraising really goes to uh, helping our cultural arts program. And we also do give teachers stipends. So teachers have an opportunity to buy a few extra things for their classrooms to make sure that they have everything they need when the school year begins. One other thing that the PTO is really um, good at is facilitating communication. So we have our own e-blast that comes out every week and it tells you all of the activities that are going on. So you know what's going to happen in the classroom in terms of cultural art programs. You also will find out if there's upcoming activities and any opportunity to volunteer. Um, we have opportunities to volunteer that entail sitting at home and making a few um, spreadsheets or generating some emails. We have activities that are, you can chair an event if you have an idea and you want to see an event happen. We had somebody several years ago want to see a, a race happen. So we had a two mile fun run that went on for a number of years. If you're interested, we need a race director. So there's an opportunity out there to get really involved or to just show up and help that day at book fair. We can come for half an hour and help out with your child's class as they pick out books. Um, one of the things that we weren't able to do last summer and we're still waiting to find out if we can do it this summer is our summer play dates. And what this does, it gives every child the opportunity to meet their kindergarten classmates who have popsicles. We meet at the playground. They get together with name tags that say what their name is and what their teacher's name is so they can meet a couple of classmates. Maybe they even know some from preschool or the neighborhood before school even gets started. So. Please keep your uh, eyes out for that. We're hoping to find out um, before it gets too late into the summer whether this is something that we can uh, do this year. Like I said, we have a weekly e-blast. This weekly e-blast, uh, you can sign up through our website. I think it's on the, it's not, yeah, it's at the bottom of this brown, ptonatic.org. Uh, you can also keep up with the meeting minutes from our monthly meeting. You're also welcome to join our monthly meeting if you'd like to sit in. Uh, with that, we have a Facebook page. You can like us on Facebook and follow along and find out some activities that are happening. And uh, one thing that I want to point out, and then a lot of parents don't, um, they miss this, 
And it's the only way that you're going to get into the school directory because the PTO creates the directory now is to sign up through um, the PTO website. And that directory gives you every student's name who signs up. So if you're planning a birthday party or your child wants to have a play date, that's a really easy way to get that information. So make sure you sign up for that. Uh, it will be notified. Uh, notifications come out at the beginning of the year that we're creating that. And the only way to get it is to sign up because once we get all the names that are in it, then we send it out to those people. It's not otherwise public. Um, in the beginning of the school year, we will have a special parent coffee. I'm hoping that we're still able to do that, in which case you'll have an opportunity to meet some of the board members. We actually have three board members who are also kindergarten parents, so you're in good company. Uh, and we're always available to answer any questions. My email is at the bottom of this page. And if you have any questions, you certainly are welcome uh, to email me. If you want to know more about getting involved, uh, we would love to have you. We do have one spot open on the board and it's for a co-chair for fundraising. So you wouldn't do it alone, uh, but it's a really fantastic way to get involved and know what's going on in the school. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Chris. All right, let's see, that ends our formal presentation at this point. I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, if you wanna type them into the chat box. And before I do, I just wanna make sure I stop sharing my screen so you can see us a little bit better. And it looks like I've, yep, it looks like I've taken that off. So you should be able to see all six of us. And I'm gonna ask anyone who would like to jump in to respond to any of these to, to please jump in. Um, I'm going to try and click on these questions and see if we can answer as many as we as many as we can. So I think you can see the first one right there. I suspect things will be addressed. I'm curious when we'll find out who our teacher is and if there'll be pop popsicle play dates this summer. Yes, uh, we talked a little bit during the presentation about how it's highly likely that the uh, teacher information will go out over the summer. Um, that's our current plan for right now, similar to what we did last year. Um, and our popsicle play dates, we're still waiting to hear a little bit more guidance. I am hopeful uh, that we'll be able to do that. Let's see if I click on this next one, if it will change it. I think it did. Okay. Uh, if a child has special needs, uh, I think you probably mean like uh, an IEP or special education services, uh, will they be an individual learner or can they join the group class? Students who are on an IEP in kindergarten are absolutely part of our class. We are an inclusive school. If there are services uh, such as literacy intervention or math support services that typically is done in the classroom, there are some services such as OTPT or speech uh, that sometimes are done outside of the classroom. Uh, but they are joining the class and they're with their class for the majority of the day. Let me see. Kids can choose breakfast or lunch. Will they be served what is available or you can choose what they eat? Uh, they typically have three lunch options a day. So there's a hot lunch, there's a salad, and then there's a sandwich. There's always a sun butter and jelly option. Um, but students have the opportunity to sign up in the morning. And I don't know if Ms. Reese or Ms. Barnes uh, want to share how students make a selection in their classrooms. I'm, I'm currently in my classroom. And I just want to show you, this is an example of, well, it's hard to see, but it's an example of how we order lunch. They have pictures that are displayed and then they would put their name next to the item that they choose. The menus are posted on the Natick Public Schools website. So it's best if you could talk to them in the morning about what they might want to choose so that when they come into the classroom, they can make that choice independently. We always have a hot lunch, a cold lunch sandwich, sun butter is available every day, and there's usually a salad or vegetarian as well. And that changes every day and every week. Maria, you wanna jump in? I just wanted to say that there is a published menu for the month, usually on the Natick Public Schools website. And also if your child has um, either a food allergy or uh, um, they're vegetarian or have a limitation like that, that you would like to be honored, you can let me know and I will let the food staff know and it gets put into a computer system so that they are aware. 
And also you can go through the Natick Public Schools food services to do that as well. Great, thank you, Maria. Let's see, similar to the above, what are some of the typical breakfast and lunch foods available? We talked a little bit about some of the lunch options. Uh, Christy, I know you're very familiar with what a lot of the breakfast options are. Do you want to share what those are? Yes. So they also have choices at um, breakfast time. It's not as published as the lunch choices, but there are cereals, uh, cereal bars, cheese, uh, milk, juice, um, um, like muffins, uh, fruit and things like that. So they do get to choose what they want to eat. And it's a variety every day but it's mostly cold things um, and, or grab and go, if you will. And I'll just remind everyone that, uh, I know we said this earlier in the presentation, presently our breakfast and lunch are completely free for any student, regardless of income. Next year, the plan is that all breakfast, all lunch will also be completely free for any student. Uh, and we are encouraging students to have breakfast um, so we are really trying to make sure that students who have not had an opportunity to eat at home, that they choose to grab something from the cafeteria. And we really encourage them to take some time in the morning um, and sit down and not rush. We say, go ahead, take five or 10 minutes, have your breakfast. Uh, and we've seen a real increase this year in the number of students who are, who are taking part in that. Let's see, how many students are on average are in a kindergarten classroom? Uh, that's typically a little bit uh, less than in a first, second, third, or fourth grade classroom. Uh, this year, Ms. Reese and Ms. Barnes, please correct me if I'm wrong. Your total numbers hover around, is it 17 or 18? Um, it depends on um, which classroom. Um, I think the lowest right now we have is um, 18 and the highest is 20. Okay. So it ranges. Uh, let's see, Maria, I, I'm wondering if you can answer this next one about the breakfast and lunch options. Do you know if the salad um, is the only vegetarian option or if there are other ones available? Actually, I, I don't have an answer to that question because I'm not usually part of the lunch choice. Yep. Um, but as we said, there's like sun butter sandwiches, things like that available. Um, I, I know that there would be an, a, a vegetarian choice. I just don't know what that might be. Um, I do know that this year for hamburger week, they also had veggie burgers. So. Okay. Let's see, next question. ASAP and early risers is not open the first week. Does this mean the week of September 2-3 or is it also closed the week of September 8-9-10? Um, I'm not sure if uh, one of our panelists has a specific answer to that one. That is so far out at this point. I don't have uh, the information, but I know that ASAP would be publishing that as soon as they have it. Does anyone have uh, that info right yet? Nope, not quite yet. All right, let's see. Uh, can we share what early release days are like? Uh, does anyone want to jump in and share that? No, I can. Um, typically, I'm trying to remember what the early release time is in a typical year, uh, Ms. Reese and Ms. Barnes. And off the top of my head, I can't because I'm so stuck in our our new hours for this year. But I know we're going to go back to uh, probably typical hours. Do you remember that, what that that's okay? Um, we dismiss around 12:05 um, at the K, K level, and I think the rest of the building might be like 12:10 or 12:15. Um, and that just means that they arrive at their typical time. Um, they will not be served lunch on that day. They will come home for the, um, for the lunch. Um, and we do that because um, teachers, we have meetings and we have professional development on those days. And I think if you look at the calendar, I think there should be expected one each month at this point. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. And Ms. Barnes, do you want to talk a little bit about what conferences and progress reports look like? Certainly. Communication is really important in the kindergarten year, and we want you to be aware not only of what your children are learning, but how they're progressing with their learning. Um, we will um, have an open house in the fall so that you'll have receive information um, specific to the curriculum. That's a parent-only night so that we can teach you what we're teaching. 
um, or explain to you what we're teaching. Uh, we will then meet together in November for parent-teacher conferences where we will set some goals for the year um, and let you know what we've found so far with assessing for your student. In both January and June, you'll receive an electronic a document that is called our Report on Student Progress, or WASP. Um, that will also show you where your child is in the progression of the skills that we're teaching. Um, and in the spring, we will have another sit down face to face meeting so that we can, um, again, let you know how they've done with their previous goals and talk about anything that we want to put a push on as goals for the remainder of the kindergarten year um, so they're ready to move up into the first grade program. Um, we also, all the teachers also do um, some newsletters. They're all in slightly different formats, but again, that's more communication and those pretty much tell you what we're doing in the classroom. So there's a lot of opportunity for you to stay um, up to date on what's happening. If, if your child forgets what they do uh, as typical five-year-olds do. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. Uh, what time do students arrive to participate in breakfast prior to 8.20? Nope, they do not need to. Uh, typically, our arrival time is 8.20, and students are asked to be in their classrooms at 8.30. So they have that 10-minute window for drop-off and getting themselves to the classroom. Uh, students who arrive at 8.20 can go directly to the cafeteria. Um, and how it works is we make sure that those students have five or 10 minutes to grab something, sit down. We don't want them to rush. We want them to have a breakfast if they would like breakfast. Um, so if a student does get to the classroom a few minutes after 8.30, uh, that is okay. We do have them take a note from the cafeteria that says, I was eating breakfast. We just go ahead and adjust the attendance and the lunch count from there, uh, and that's acceptable. Um, we do encourage students to uh, start to wrap things up at around 8.30, so they're not more than just a, a few minutes uh, later than the start time of the day. Let's see. Uh, are there any after-school programs also? Yes, ASAP is our main after-school program. That is the one program that happens at Brown Elementary each year. Uh, we also have a number of other after-school programs which occur off-site. So I'm going to start to name these, and Ms. Arnold is going to make sure that I don't miss any. Uh, one of them is the YMCA. Uh, one of them is an after-school program called Tobin. Um, YMCA, Tobin, I feel like there's one I'm missing. Longfellow. Longfellow. Uh, students who participate in YMCA, Longfellow, or Tobin, they're taking either a van or they're taking a bus over to those locations. Was there another one off-site other than those three? I don't think so. It's just the three of them. Ms. Cushing, thank you so much for putting that information in there. Greatly appreciated. Uh, Ms. Valente, will there be a chance for students to come to come in prior uh, to school to, to view the school. Um, I would love it if that were um, an option and available. Typically, we do that as part of uh, something in the spring, um, but at the present time, we're not able to do that. And so we continue to wait for a little bit more guidance from the Board of Health and Dr. Nolan on whether or not we're able to do that. Let's see. Do we have to sign up online for breakfast and lunch. In a typical year, yes, you do need to sign up. Uh, through our website, you can see uh, the options for signing up for breakfast and lunch, as Ms. Arnold explained. Um, but this current year, and I'm assuming it'll be uh, exactly the same next year, we do not have a system where students need to sign up ahead of time. They can go straight down to the cafeteria and have breakfast. And if they would like to have lunch, all they need to do is let their classroom teacher know, I would like to leave with a lunch. Uh, and they'll get lunch. If we're actually there for the full day next year, which we are hoping and anticipating, uh, then they would go into the cafeteria, they would get a free lunch, they would just sign up that morning for the lunch that they would like, and then they would go to the cafeteria and have it. Uh, Ms. Carnahan, do you have classroom websites or do you typically communicate via newsletters or both? I will tell you about uh, two different communications that will come from the school. One is going to be uh, a Friday newsletter that comes out every Friday, and it's attached to the district-wide e-blast uh, called the NPS Engage. If you read the NPS Engage, that's information from Dr. Nolan. It's got a lot of district-wide information that's important for families to read. I strongly encourage you to sign up for that. 
And then if you go to the bottom of that eblast, you'll see a link to each of the schools. If you click on uh, Brown Elementary, it'll open up our Friday newsletter. I try to keep uh, that information to a limited amount of space so you're not overwhelmed with information. I try to put the really key important information for the week there. Um, you'll also see PTO information there, but there is also a PTO website that is separate. Um, and then maybe, uh, Ms. Barnes or Ms. Reese, you can talk a little bit about what different teachers do for communication. Um, I can sort of uh, tell you a little about our website. Um, it's it, We don't really do individual classroom websites. Um, we, this year and actually last year, developed a kindergarten uh, website. Uh, the five of us work very closely um, all the time. In the last two years, we've lived with each other. Um, so... We decided that this past year that we would put all our websites together because we're sending out the same information. Um, and we do typically send out newsletters um, and sometimes we post them on the website, sometimes um, which our individual pages are on there, or we will send them paper um, because we do have communication go home every Friday in the red folders. Not only will you get some of the fun things that we do in the classroom, but it also gives you the newsletter. We usually try to put it out on Friday afternoon. So when you um, get your child home over the weekend, you can read it and talk to them about what they did at school the following week. Um, and that's how we communicate. Um, I know that that's changed kind of over the course of time. I think it was kind of trendy for teachers to kind of have their own classroom website uh, in the past, and, and a lot of teams are, are moving towards having like a, a group page uh, moving forward. Uh, let's see. Ms. Valente, do you know when bus sign up is for next year? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for taking all these questions and giving us your time. Um, yes, I believe uh, that bus sign up uh, for right now is currently open, and I think it closes as of July 1. Uh, and we're going to make sure that we add that link to the chat as well. Karen Cushing is going to do that. Thank you, Karen. And Ms. Breed, is there just one teacher per 20 students, or is there an assistant teacher as well? Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about um, a staff member called a KEEP. That is a kindergarten early intervention uh, program teacher. That staff member is part of the classroom. Uh, each of the kindergarten classrooms will have one, and that person is, that staff member is there from um, the beginning of the day all the way up to about 11.45. So they're there for a good portion of the day, um, specifically for the literacy block and then uh, potentially some of the math block. Um, so there is another adult in the room, and there are sometimes situations where there could be a paraprofessional uh, as part of the room, depending on uh, the classroom. But typically, there's there's not uh, someone in the classroom outside of that. Let's see. I'm trying to scroll to see if there are any other questions. I'll just wait another second or two to see if there are more. Yep, OK. I had a feeling one might pop up. Will anyone be monitoring if the students ate their food or not? Will there be any daily sheet to know how the child did? Thanks. Um, typically, we are not monitoring whether students ate their lunch or not. We don't have a uh, like a tool that we use to go around and check uh, if they ate their breakfast or if they ate their lunch or how much they ate. But I do know if you have a question or a concern, if your child is coming home hungry, um, that can be something that comes up here and there. Oftentimes, lunch can be a social opportunity. And so students can be very, very eager to speak to some of the other friends that they are sitting near. Sometimes you'll go into a cafeteria, especially during kindergarten lunch at the beginning of the year. This happens a lot in first grade as well. Um, and you'll get to the very end of the lunch. Students have had 25 minutes to eat. And it'll be the last three minutes. And you'll go over to a student and you look at the lunchbox and nothing has been touched. And you'll say, what happened? And they'll say, ah, I was talking to my friend and I forgot. Um, if that happens, we will talk to the student and we'll encourage them to make sure that they're opening their food up as soon as they sit down. Uh, we do want to make sure that students uh, have enough to eat. So we will keep an eye on it. We will communicate with you if we see this happening on a regular basis and this becomes something that is causing them to be really hungry. Um, and if you have questions, you can always reach out uh, 
uh, and let us know. How many students per class? It's somewhere around 18 to 20 is typical. Are there limited spots for the bus? I do not believe so. Typically, we're able to fit everyone on, and we calculate how many buses we need based on the number of students who will be riding that bus, who live in that bus area. Does almost all academic instruction take place in the morning when early intervention is, is there, or are specials sometimes in the morning too? Jen or Leslie, would you like to take that one? Uh, go ahead, go ahead Liz. Okay. Um, the bulk of our um, a bu the bulk of our academic literacy does take place in the mornings. Um, sometimes there's also a math block. Uh, occasionally, we are learning our science and social studies through literacy, so it all kind of intertwines together. Um, the majority is in the morning when we do have the um, intervention support within the classroom, um, but our specials are always in the afternoon. Our afternoons, um, because the children are also getting a little fatigued, um, we do have our recess time, we have our specials, and then as I had mentioned, it's a great time for like read aloud stories, shared reading, um, some activities that are academic, but they're not as rigorous. Um, but all throughout the day, we're also working on things like social emotional, social emotional skills, communication, and we're kind of weaving um, all of the curriculum through everything we do. Um, but the the big bulk of it is in the morning prior to lunch when they're fresh and ready and energized. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. Ms. Reese, do you want to talk a little bit about what morning drop-off looks like? I know I'm out there, but maybe you can talk about kind of the experience, especially in the first couple days. Um, yeah, as we mentioned, uh, actually the first two days where we split the um, children up, you will be arriving at nine o'clock. And we in the past have met over on the kindergarten playground. Um, but then after that, um, your child will arrive with whether whatever transportation they choose. Um, if they do get dropped off for the buses, um, they are um, met by uh, an adult who then brings the kindergartners actually through the building <laughs> so we don't lose any of them. Um, they follow the adult down and they um, you know, ask the teacher's names and the teachers were always out the first couple of weeks um, waiting by our door. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, they will come and sit outside the classroom until it's time. Um, for walkers, there are designated doors where the kindergartners um, will meet and they'll come through that door. And again, there will be an adult waiting there to es escort them to the kindergarten hallways. Um, and again, also, if they are getting dropped off in the morning, um, there's several wonderful people out there um, greening them, helping them get out of the um, car and directing them also to the correct door so they can get to the kindergarten hallway. Um, believe me, it, it looks chaotic in the beginning, but we have it down. Um, and the kids actually, after a while, get the routine down within days and they actually remember the door. Um, we do have symbols at each of the doors. I think kindergarten this year, we have balloons. Um, and the kids would just look for the balloons. And each of us in the beginning of the year this year, we had a certain color balloon outside the kindergarten door. So all I had to remember was Reese was red, Barnes was blue. And I can't remember whoever, uh, the other couple kindergarten teachers, what color they had, but they could associate um, their teacher's name with the color of the balloon. So. This past year, we also uh, tried to include a short video ahead of time that we sent out to families where um, I had my daughter and myself get in my truck. We put the video camera on and we literally drove onto the property past Kennedy Middle School and then pulled up to the front of the building. Um, we got out of the truck and we walked over to the appropriate door where kindergarten students go in. We showed the poster of the red balloon so that students could see, okay, that's the door I'm supposed to be going in. And then we walked up the hallway and we said, this is where you're gonna turn either left or right, because we really wanted to make sure that students are comfortable on that first day. Um, my daughter's in second grade, so I remember her going to kindergarten for the first time very clearly. I know there can be a feeling of, you know, she's gonna be all right. This is the first time she's in public school. I can tell you, we have five extremely talented kindergarten teachers who do an 
excellent job of making sure that students feel welcome, feel taken care of. The very first thing they see when they walk in the door is that teacher saying, hi, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. Um, so we start right outside and greet them as they're getting out of the car or off the bus. We make sure they get to the right place and really our focus and time and energy that first day of school is to make sure that kindergarten students get to where they need to be safely uh, and that they're happy and taken care of and know that if there's something that they need, we will help them out. Let's see, first two days, Mr. Reggie, um, First two days, yes, 9 a.m., and then it goes to 8.20 is drop-off. Uh, drop-off begins, excuse me. It is 8.30. That is kind of the official start time of school. Um, just a reminder to that parent, you will not be coming both days, so you will only be dropping them off at 9 o'clock. If you're in A group, it would be the first day, and then if you're B group, um, and then after that, it starts at 8. And that goes to this question right here. When will we know which class the child will be placed in? Oh, I, this is not about A group and B group. This is about which class. I'll talk about A group and B group as well. Uh, you'll get the name of your teacher likely at the very beginning of August, if not the end of July. Um, how is it being decided? We have a placement process. All of our kindergarten teachers take the registration information and also uh, in any information that you provided, and we build classes that we think are well balanced. Uh, but I do want to go back to uh, what Ms. Reese was just talking about uh, in terms of A group and B group. When you receive the letter that indicates who your child's teacher will be, it will include a group letter on there. So it will say, you are in group A. Your first day of school is September, I think that's second, right? Um, or you are in group B, your first day of school is September 3rd. You'll be coming from nine to one. So it'll have that information on there so that you know ahead of time. Let me see. Will you send a kindergarten boarding document during the summer with all that information and steps to complete before the school year? Yes, you will be getting a significant amount of information from us uh, about the beginning of the school year. We will also reach out to you if there's information that you have not provided that's very important for us to have before the beginning of the year. Um, so a little bit of both. Some will go to you and we'll also reach out if there's something that we need to complete uh, all those steps to. Mr. McNeely, do you think there will be the option for front door walker drop off again next September or to, to be determined? I believe that uh, that is a strong possibility, but I hesitate to say yes uh, as a solid concrete answer because again, we are waiting from uh, Dr. Nolan and the Board of Health for more guidance on that. But we are highly optimistic. And the last question that I see right now, can you repost the morning schedule times for classes? I think you're probably referring to uh, the times of uh, what happens over the course of the morning. Am I reading that the right way? I think so. Uh, yes, this presentation will be uh, shared out with all of the families. So that will that is included in the uh, presentation. So as that gets sent out to you, you can go through the presentation and you can see those scheduled times again. Okay, that looks like uh, those are all of our questions for now. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us. I want to thank um, Ms. Arnold, Ms. Risi, Ms. Barnes, Ms. Shapur, and our PTO president, uh, Ms. Therian. Thank you so much for joining us. And I want our teachers to go home and have a break um, so that they can get up and come to school tomorrow. Uh, so it was wonderful speaking with all of you. If there are more questions, please feel free to reach out to our front office or myself. My email is amccann at naticps.org. That's A-M-C-C-A-N-N -N at naticps.org. Thank you so much and have a wonderful evening.